Good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to thank the press office for the opportunity of uh, presenting our study in this format today. Um, and I do hope you find the uh, findings of this study quite interesting. My name is Robert Lowne. I work at the Royal Marsden Hospital in London, but also for the anti nolan bone marrow donor register in London. And just as a brief background, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with this, but we know that allogeneic or donor transplants may be the only chance of cure for many patients with blood cancers, such as leukemia or lymphoma. But importantly, donors must share a similar tissue type with the patient in order to improve the outcome of the transplant. Um, we know the chance of an individual sibling being a match to be one in four, but of course many people have more than one sibling. So overall, based on average family sizes, about a third of patients will have a sibling with the same tissue type. And, and other patients must find an alternative donor, and usually the first point of call would be an unrelated donor. But there is a huge variation in tissue types within a population and certainly between populations, and this makes it difficult to find matches and this difference is particularly marked between people of different ethnicities. And the problem is even today, with our enormous bone marrow donor registries worldwide, the majority of donors listed on these registries tend to be of a white northern European descent. And so this disproportionately favors patients of the same ethnic background. And so historically, the provision of unrelated, matched unrelated donors to ethnic minority patients has been very poor compared to white Northern European patients. There have been a number of studies, just to pick one as an example. Um, the Dutch looked at a cohort actually from 1986, but they split it into three, and the more recent cohort of patients from 96 to 2000 showed that a suitable unrelated donor was found in only 36% of white of non-white Northern European patients or ethnic minority patients compared to 68% in, in whites. And overall, only 32% of ethnic minority patients were transplanted compared to nearly 60% of white Northern European patients. So you can see the rates of transplant only 10, 10 to 12 years ago were half that of, of patients of white descent. And typically, those who couldn't find a donor were either not transplanted or they were transplanted using a less suitable donor where at the time, um, these types of transplants were associated with a higher risk of complications from the transplant and therefore a poorer prognosis. So why did we perform this study? Well, there's, there's three things really that have happened since the, that time. One is that the, the size of the registries across the world combined now is, is over 22 million donors and this has improved significantly even over the last decade. But also there has been development, as you've heard in the previous talk, of alternative donor sources such as cord blood, where we know that the degree of tissue typing matching doesn't have to be so great, and also in haploidentical or half-match related donor transplantation. However, there have been relatively few contemporary studies which have shown the impact of these new donor sources and the improvement in donor numbers on the provision of of um, transplant to ethnic minority patients. So in the study, we looked at 332 consecu consecutively recruited patients from four UK transplant centers, three in London and one outside London. We had quite a high proportion of, of non-white Northern European patients in this study, almost a quarter. Um, and this was an almost entirely adult group of patients. When we compared the white Northern European and the non-white Northern European patients, there were no significant difference in background characteristics such as age, gender, disease, and disease stage. And we followed up these patients from the time they were referred to the Anthony Nolan for an unrelated donor search all the way through to transplant and subsequently through post-transplant follow-up. And just to show you a breakdown, this is a breakdown, I hope this is clear, of the non-white Northern European patients. And you can see, certainly if you're used to the makeup in the US, that in the UK our ethnic break, breakdown is quite different. We've got a large proportion of South Asian, Afro-Caribbean um, patients, also quite a large proportion of patients from the Middle East and from Mediterranean regions. Smaller numbers of patients from Southeast Asia, China, and Japan, etc. 
So what we found, and this is the, this is the number of the proportion of patients from each ethnic group that found a donor at the confirmatory typing stage, which is where the donor has been requested and a repeat sample has been taken to check they're a match. And you can see here that the, the fully matched, 10 out of 10 matched donors for white Northern Europeans was 70%, for other ethnicities was 20%. But those were the suitable donor. By suitable, in the UK, we would transplant some with either a 9 or a 10 out of 10 donor. 61.4% of non-white Northern European patients were founding a, f finding a suitable donor for transplant. And you can see this is a significant improvement on historical levels where we, we saw levels of 32% only 12, 13 years ago. And if you look at the proportion of patients that actually made it to transplant, you can see that the, there is no statistically significant difference between white Northern European and other ethnicity patients reaching transplant. Those percentages, 56 and 62%, were not statistically significantly different. But what you can see is that the proportion of cord blood here in red and haploidentical transplants in other ethnicities, of course, was higher, reflecting the fact that many of these patients wouldn't have found an unrelated donor, but we were able to make up that difference with these alternative donor sources. And this was a very encouraging finding. If you then compare, look, look at the rates of achieving transplant over time, you can see these curves are very close together. There was no statistically significant difference in the rates of patients achieving transplant. But when we look just at those patients who did get to transplant and looked specifically at the time it took them to, to get to transplant, there was a, a difference and it was still taking longer for non-white Northern European patients to reach transplant, 110 days versus 132 days from the point of donor search. And it, this is likely due to the delay in finding a donor for these patients. So in summary, We've seen that the time to transplant continues to improve from historical levels for all patients, but particularly for those of non-white Northern European background. There's been a significant improvement in the percentage of non-white Northern European patients able to find a donor, and the use of cord blood or haploidentical transplants has leveled the playing field, as it were, for ethnic minority patients, at least in the population we looked at in the UK. We don't know still whether the cure rates and survival with the new donor sources such as cord blood or haploidentical transplants are as good as unrelated donors, but certainly from the previous study there is growing evidence that this may be the case. Um, recruitment of ethnic minority donors, however, still needs to improve. The battle is by no means won, and lots of work still needs to be done to improve uh, provision of unrelated donors to these groups. And finally, just one final caveat is that these donors were selected using a specific registry-based graft identification service at Anthony Nolan. And so it's, th th this service is not provided to other transplant centers in the UK, so we can't say that these findings are also applicable to those other transplant centers that may not use this service. Thank you very much.